since I'm in the, here in a double role as a as an implementing partner of the project uh, uh, representing International Development Law Organization, and also as a trainer, I would like to tell you a few words about our organization. And uh, since our uh, work in Romania is pretty much, uh, uh, how to say, actually we are uh, present uh, for. A, uh, a lot of years already here in Romania. We are intergovernmental organization and uh, we are the only organization in the world who is covering uh, exclusively rule of law in many different aspects from the legis uh, legis uh, drafting legislation, amendments, training judges, uh, prosecutors, bailiffs, any other uh, and other legal professionals, building uh, capacity of the institutions, building new institutions, uh, covering the general topics like health law and many, many other uh, things. We are uh, based in Rome and uh, under our organization we have more than 5,000 uh, legal uh, experts who are involved on daily basis in many different parts of the world. I'm representing the, our department for Eastern Europe and Western Balkan and I'm program manager for Eastern Europe and uh, especially for uh, Western Balkan countries. Uh, maybe I made a mistake. Uh, Eastern Europe, Central Asia is the department. Uh, so, um, here uh, we were following the uh, effort of uh, Romania to the, uh, through the accession of the European Union and we were very active together. Uh, back then, Julia was also part of our organization and we did many, many trainings uh, for judges in uh, Romania. And we, had, uh, we have actually alumni association with, uh, which include more than 500 uh, Romanian judges who, are, who were trained by uh, our organization. That told, uh, and uh, as a result of those activities, uh, IDLO, uh, uh, Romania joined uh, IDLO as a full member party, uh, and uh, now uh, it's a kind of fully op operational member. For us, uh, af after accession of Romania to European Union, we had a, uh, we didn't, we weren't so present here because there was not a, a specific need for us to train since the pro process was uh, kind of finalized. But this, is, this for us was a great opportunity to, to be back here and to understand uh, about the progress uh, done in the, that period and what is the current needs for, uh, for the future activities of our organization here. Uh, for that reason, I would like, since the yesterday we didn't start uh, the, the day uh, as we usually start, like presenting all of you, I would like to hear uh, more uh, about uh, yourself, just so if you, in few words, just to say where, uh, from which court you are coming, and uh, having in mind this specific topic, maybe to, to underline something, if you have some uh, uh, general issues or uh, fields that uh, you, uh, you are more interested, so if you can tell uh, uh, just in a few words about uh, your expectations and uh, your future needs uh, related to the general training uh, activities related to your current job. So uh, we can start maybe from that, this side like last time. So. A short presentation. Yeah, just, uh -huh, okay. Only the type of court uh, we are. Yeah, yeah, from where, which court you're coming and uh, maybe some your uh, experience related to the topic from yesterday and uh, what your, or expectations. Uh, yes, I'm from a commercial court, uh, the Court of Appeal of Bucharest, and mm -hmm. it is the commercial court. So we have the litigation between the enterprises and the people who make commercial. Mm -hmm. We don't work in intellectual property. Mm -hmm. We don't have these kind of cases, but mm -hmm. it was very interesting to hear yeah. Mr. Zanotti. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. I am from Cluj-Napoca, uh, specialized in commercial law, uh, tribunal specialized. Uh, and uh, about yesterday's topic, uh, it was very interesting. I didn't have, I have only one case related, uh, remotely related to the topic, mm -hmm. uh, but I thought it was very in interesting and uh, um, it uh, widens my uh, expect, uh, horizon. Uh -huh. yeah. Thank you. Din Craiova, Tribunal, legat de informațiile transmise. Yeah, it's open. Just, just. Tribunal, 
Legat de informațiile transmise, ieri mi s-au părut interesante, am reținut foarte multe și sper să mă ajute pe viitor. Thank you. Sunt specializat în drept comercial și insolvență. Am lucrat în ambele domenii, adică lucrez în ambele domenii. Tribunalul București, din Capitală. Am avut cazurile legate inclusiv de, de trademark, de marcă. Am avut un singur caz, clasic, legat de folosirea fără drept a unei mărci. Pe concurență avem, concurența este în face parte din competența noastră pe drept comercial. Iar proprietatea intelectuală mi s-a părut într-adevăr foarte interesantă ieri și sper să fie și în continuare la fel. Excellent, thank you. We will talk today a little bit more about competition as well. Numele meu este Exarco Harfaș Andreea. Sunt am lucrat la Tribunalul București, secția 6 a comercial, acum sunt la Curtea de Apel, tot secția comercială. Am lucrat puțin pe proprietate intelectuală, am avut vreo două spețe, mai mult pe concurență, am mai avut și incidental în cadrul insolvenței acum la Curtea de Apel. Mi s-a părut foarte interesant seminarul de ieri și mai ales metoda interactivă a domnului avocat și uh, sunt convinsă că o să plec cu mult mai multe cunoștințe decât aveam de la acest seminar și că va fi foarte folositor pe viitor. Mulțumesc! Thank you. Uh, mă numesc Ana Maria Matescu, vin de la secția 6 a Tribunalului București, secție comercială, suntem specializați în litigii între profesioniști, nu am avut spețe legate de drept de proprietate intelectuală, dar domeniul mi-a plăcut din totdeauna și mi-a plăcut foarte mult prezentarea de ieri și modul în care a decurs toată discuția interactivă cu domnul avocat și, și eu cred că o să plec cu mai multe informații de aici, oricum... Sunt mult mai deschis acum față de problemele de drept de proprietate intelectuală. Și vă mulțumim foarte mult pentru invitație. Yeah. Mă numesc Monica Anica, lucrez la Tribunalul București, secția 6 comercială. Și eu, ca și ceilalți colegi din aceeași secție, nu am avut litigii pe proprietatea intelectuală, uneori foarte rar pe concurență neloială. Subiectele dezbătute ieri au fost foarte interesante, mi-au deschis noi orizonturi și vă mulțumim pentru, pentru că ați organizat acest seminar. Madalina Afrăsinie, judecător Tribunalul București, secția 6 -a civilă, litigi cu profesioniști. Uh, proprietatea intelectuală nu este specializarea noastră, la noi completele sunt diferențiate și se consideră că proprietatea intelectuală ține de litigiu civil pur și simplu. Uh, recunosc că după discuțiile de ieri, aseară am căutat un curs de specializare pe proprietatea intelectuală și am fost foarte dezamăgită că nu am găsit ce mi-am dorit în România, probabil că doar în afară. Este un domeniu de nișă care recunosc mă, mă tentează să îl analizez, să îl descoper, mai bine zis. M-au ajutat foarte mult informațiile de ieri. Sunt convinsă că și cele de astăzi. Recunosc că ziua de astăzi ține mai mult de specializarea noastră. Sunt teme care țin de specializarea noastră ca judecător de comercial. Um, mulțumesc pentru selecție și sper să ne mai întâlnim și în alte ocazii. Numele meu este Claudia Budei, lucrez la secția 6 -a civilă a Tribunalului București și am fost un pic surprinsă de tema de ieri pentru că nu era identificată în 
la momentul când am făcut selecția pentru acest seminar. Însă a fost foarte interesant, mai ales că am avut ocazia să aflu lucruri noi despre proprietatea intelectuală, nelucrând în mod concret cu, în acest domeniu. Și astăzi sper să, să aflu la fel lucruri noi despre piața de capital, care a fost motivul pentru care eu am ales acest curs. Bună ziua, numele meu este Alexandra Burea. Funcționez în prezent la secția 7 a Tribunalului București, care este specializată în litigii de insolvență și falimente. Nu am avut până în prezent oportunitatea să mă confrunt cu probleme de aplicare a legislației proprietății intelectuale, dar cum în insolvență, în general, aplici legislația din foarte multe alte domenii, eu sper că la un moment dat să avem de a face și cu chestiuni legate de proprietate intelectuală. Dezbaterea de ieri a fost într-adevăr foarte interesantă și a deschis o perspectivă nouă asupra unui domeniu mai puțin cunoscut printre judecătorii din România. Vă mulțumesc! Yeah. Mă numesc Secrețeanu Adriana, sunt judecător la Înalta Cultă de Casație și Justiție, la secția de contencios administrativ și fiscal. În legătură cu tema de ieri, noi nu soluționăm litigii în materie de proprietate intelectuală, soluționăm litigii în materie de concurență. Dar ziua de ieri mi s-a părut deosebit de interesantă, în special de datorită modalității în care s-a desfășurat și cu siguranță este un domeniu în care mi-ar plăcea să lucrez dacă nu aș lucra în materie de contencios. Mulțumesc! Thank you. Bună ziua, mă numesc Andrescu Ionus Cristian, sunt judecător la Curtea de Apel București, secția contencios administrativ și fiscal. Competența noastră este mai puțin legată de temele de ieri și de astăzi, însă avem în competență controlul legalității unor acte emise de autorități din domeniu, autoritatea de concurență, autoritatea de supraveghere financiară. Prin urmare, consider că sunt utile informațiile pe care le-am dobândit și o să le dobândesc aici. Mulțumesc! Thank you. Bună ziua, numele meu este Sas Remus, sunt judecător la Curtea de Apel Suceava, secția de contencios administrativ. În legătură cu tema seminarului am soluționat doar litigii de insolvență, dar asta în perioada când secția de contencios administrativ era comună cu secția comercială. Nu am soluționat litigii privind drepturile de autor sau concurența neloială. Mulțumesc! Bună ziua, mă numesc Mihaela Hăprian, lucrez la Tribunalul Satu Mare, secția a doua civilă, în complete specializat în litigii între profesioniști. Nu am soluționat litigii în materia proprietate intelectuală. Prezentarea de mi s-a părut interesant, am aflat multe lucruri noi și vă mulțumesc pentru invitație. Bună ziua, sunt consilier juridic la Consiliul Superior al Magistraturii. Am lucrat și în domeniul privat, am avut oarecare tangențe și cu acest domeniu. Pentru mine este un real câștig să mă reîmprospătez și să îmi îmbogățesc cunoștințele în acest domeniu. Bună ziua, Diana Sârghi, lucrez la Tribunalul Vaslui, secția civilă. Sunt specializată în domeniul dreptului civil și a dreptului insolvenței. Am soluționat două litigii în materie de proprietate intelectuală, unul decurgând din încălcarea dreptului la marcă și unul privind concurența neloială. Este foarte dificil pentru un judecător să soluționeze un astfel de litigiu, mai ales în domeniul încălcării dreptului la marcă, atunci când și pârâtul este în posesia unei mărci înregistrate. Informațiile de ieri vor fi cu siguranță utile, utile pentru a stabili criteriile pentru întinderea prejudiciului, dacă există sau nu încălcarea dreptului la marcă. Mulțumesc! 
Thank Bună you. ziua, Anca Șerban de la Consiliul Superior al Magistraturii. În activitatea noastră nu ne confruntăm într-adevăr cu, cu astfel de probleme tematica vizată de seminar, însă toată problematica care a fost dezbătută este de mare actualitate și de folos oricărui jurist. Mulțumesc! Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, what I can tell now today, I mean these days, uh, in this group it's kind of more homogeneous, so basically we have uh, people that are kind of most involved in the competition cases, insolvency, and uh, so that I think that today what we are talking about is going to be some, somehow more related to, uh, to what you are doing in, uh, in real life. And uh, I also have that uh, big responsibility since Julia is such a great expert and everybody are so happy about him. So it's very difficult to be better <laughs> than him. Or, uh, so I'm not going to even to try. I will, I will uh, do our style. I want to say, uh, even he told yesterday about the training methodology that uh, IDLO have uh, that specific training methodology that uh, we are trying to implement the, the more the possible. To make uh, uh, to take in, uh, in account uh, adult learning uh, methodologies and how to to approach adult learning, which is completely different from the the, the basic uh, students learning. So uh, we will today talk uh, in my presentation about uh, a general uh, subject is uh, introduction to market ec economic analysis, but more uh, in more details we will talk about costs, uh, returns, market competition and its functions, market equilibrium and also uh, some part of uh, related to entrepreneurship. So, uh, as you might see, there is a lot of uh, different uh, aspects or topics uh, in one presentation that for sure we cannot uh, cover all in one hour or something. But uh, I will also uh, like to have the, more, uh, the most interactive uh, discussion that possible. So I will try to talk less about uh, the things are theoretical aspects of the presentation related to the general economic terms, and then maybe more about entrepreneurship, competition, etc. Uh, what I can hear here, uh, there is a lot of uh, experience among you uh, about uh, insolvency cases. This is not the part of the, um, this training, but for sure we can include some, uh, some of those uh, aspects as well, since uh, we, uh, as an organization, and together with DBRD, are implementing many different projects. Uh, they are uh, connected exclusively for in insolvency. Uh, and uh, I can share some of our experience if you have uh, questions or something like that. So, uh, we will start uh, first with the basic economic terms and uh, uh, with the previous group I was talking that most, uh, most of us, like uh, I'm, uh, my, uh, my professional uh, background is in economy and uh, corporate intelligence and organization and uh, I have a, uh, let's say, minor background in uh, commercial law since I was uh, attending Faculty of Economics. And I think that it goes vice versa, that even the, the students of Faculty of Law, even uh, in uh, Romania, they're very, uh, on few occasions, exposed to the, uh, some uh, details about uh, economics. So basically there is maybe one uh, subject that's covering the economic topics, and then uh, that, that is all. Do you, do you agree on that, or do you have uh, some, something more during your... Uh, yeah. So, uh, which is uh, in both cases, I think, uh, mistake since uh, uh, we are all uh, uh, working in a uh, very close, uh, inter uh, we have a lot of intersections, very cl close co collaboration, especially when we talk about uh, issues like insolvency, competition, uh, general, uh, other, many other types of commercial uh, cases, uh, etc. We need to understand uh, the wider uh, picture and uh, the, uh, the environment where the companies uh, grows, they are, where they are born, and how they are interacting, what is the legal framework uh, for their successful uh, work, or for, uh, to, to, to provide that uh, positive environment to uh, enable them to grow uh, together with the support of the judicial system and judges uh, itself. So, uh, when we talk uh, about uh, the uh, basic decision-making units in one country, uh, we, can have, uh, we can talk about three major uh, components, and that is uh, firm, 
entrepreneur or households, or in the opposite way if you, go to, if you want to talk about uh, bottom-up. Basically, uh, uh, every economy is uh, uh, based on the one single household. Uh, we will talk uh, later how, how that is possible, and, uh, but uh, a part that usually we consider household uh, as a unit that is consuming unit, that is the also unit who provide many different uh, components to, to create uh, uh, input markets, etc. Entrepreneur uh, is a, some, some uh, individual who have uh, um, motivation and, uh, let's say, inspiration to, to, to add uh, additional uh, value uh, to, to the firm and to, to, to do, make some business activities in a way to, uh, to turn uh, his, uh, let's say, action in a positive business success. And the firm also, uh, we will talk later about the special different um, forms of, uh, of, uh, of firms in Romania, but generally speaking also. Uh, it's actually the main, uh, as the house called, is the main uh, unit of the market. Also the firm is the main unit because the uh, whole uh, commercial market is actually based on the many different uh, size units of the firms as companies that exist in one uh, uh, national economy, but not also because we have uh, also multinational companies and foreign companies that are uh, operating in our, uh, in our national market. So the, having that in mind, it's really uh, important to, to understand the, the how uh, uh, they impact the, the, uh, the life, uh, different, uh, let's say, different spheres of the life uh, in, in, on our, or our how to say, citizens and uh, society in general. Um, we have circular uh, flow economic activity. I don't want to talk uh, here more about that. Uh, I want to talk uh, more about the markets. Uh, when, it, when I mentioned before uh, household uh, as a provider of the, uh, of the goods, not just uh, as a consumer, I was thinking that uh, basically, um, just a moment. Oops, 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 sorry. Yeah. Um, we, we have different markets, so basically market is an output market, it's something that uh, it's production of national production, it's uh, uh, offered to the, uh, to the market as a, as a supply. And then uh, input markets are uh, where, uh, where all the other co elements like labor, capital and land they can uh, actually create that added value and uh, to, uh, to, to make possible that production is, uh, or goods or services or financial services for, uh, in a whole can be offered to the market. So when we talk now about uh, input markets, uh, uh, we can uh, now really be focused on the households because uh, uh, Usually, we don't have that perspective that one household uh, actually can supply, uh, actually supplying labor. So the family members, they are workers in different kind of organizations, companies, etc. So apart, they are consuming. They are also contributing as a as a um, valuable labor. Uh, capital market is also very strongly connected to the households because households uh, are receiving wages and salaries. Uh, accumulating certain uh, amount of uh, savings that goes to the banking system and banking system accumulating that lit small amounts of the individual savings create a big, uh, bigger uh, supply of the financial uh, goods and services that can uh, be again offered to the market and make that kind of circular uh, round. And of course land, uh, also the private individuals most of the times they are uh, owners of the land. Uh, I think in Romania is the same case. And uh, putting that land uh, in a proper um, uh, function and uh, that makes the, the also agri-industry or any other uh, industry more uh, productive. Uh, when we talk about land, that is a good example that I have uh, visiting last uh, week uh, your neighbor, Republic of Moldova. That after the fall of communism period, they had uh, that situation that they decided to divide all uh, available land to the individual uh, um, families or the kind of land uh, workers. And uh, they arrived uh, from that good intention to, uh, to a situation that each family 
uh, he had a small piece of land which is not uh, very uh, efficient to, to work on. Because to work on land, you need to have a special mechanization, you need to add many different things, also to hire some additional uh, labor. And then at the end, when you make your calculation, you are understanding that uh, that is not feasible. Uh, for that reason, there was a, a lot of uh, cases of insolvency, let's say, of the of the individual producers, etc. So, idea uh, actually, market is the one to push forward to to try to group those uh, small ones in some kind of associations or uh, even private companies who will, who will have and who will uh, the, keep the <coughs> things uh, more efficient because in a way how it's set it is not uh, good also for individual producers but also it make a big and huge impact to the to the market in general because if individual house, household is not available to uh, create added value then it's not going to be transmitted to the to the next steps and basically everything is going to be blocked um, when we talk uh, about demand uh, on the on the market, uh, now we were talking all all that all before what I told it was a kind of more supply because how uh, what uh, what is what is available. What is uh, on demand side is also uh, individual household because uh, it's a final consuming unit. But also, uh, when we talk about market uh, demand, that is the sum uh, of all the quantities of goods and services for a period, uh, per period by all the households buying in the market for that good or services. So, uh, we, we can, when we talk about market demand, we can have a, a kind of national market demand, but also uh, regional or local uh, local market depends uh, which prospect, uh, perspective uh, we are taking it into con con consideration. Uh, all this maybe uh, sounds very general and uh, very basic economic uh, uh, like explanations of the of the functioning uh, of our uh, market environment, but it's very uh, closely uh, related to understand when we have a when you have a case, for example, in front of you, to understand from which kind of uh, uh, background and which is the uh, environment where a specific uh, business unit or um, party in the in dispute coming from to understand a wider picture why that uh, specific company is in the situation uh, as it is in the specific moment. It's not just uh, individual, uh, how to say, uh, impact, but also there is a wider, wider um, a set of um, conditions that they influence our, our companies. Uh, okay, we already talked about this. Uh, General first lesson on the Faculty of Economics, but also I think uh, in a Faculty of Law is the in that one subject of economics is uh, about macro and uh, microeconomics, and uh, that is something that we are uh, learning a lot. And uh, also both of them uh, influence very much uh, specific uh, actors in the, on the market. Macroeconomic uh, is actually the, the the let's say higher economic economic of the state and uh, the, uh, he, which deals with the large scale uh, economic factors. Uh, they are also national, but uh, also some, in, uh, let's say, international and worldwide uh, tendencies, they influence uh, our, uh, our life. Uh, that is economic of a national economy as a whole, and uh, mostly deal with the money, prices, employment, and inflation. Uh, which create uh, kind of which tackle all the topics that they are actually uh, initial inputs to the every business activity, and uh, if if we have a proper macro uh, set in macroeconomic principles in the country, then everything uh, it's a kind of precondition to the good uh, functioning of the microeconomic uh, principles and then uh, functioning of business as, as a whole. Uh, when we talk about microeconomics, uh, there is a decision making of individuals and analysis of the choices of con consumers uh, who can be con uh, individuals or household uh, as a own and firm in a variety of market situations. So uh, my microeconomics is more about uh, analyzing supply, demand, market equilibrium, uh, the, uh, the availability for households to pay, uh, the different kind of intera uh, interactions uh, between the, the, those inputs uh, together and how the, for example, average wage, uh, which is, or um, 
as it is, for example, in one market, can influence the, the, the let's say, increase in uh, consumption or uh, increase in, uh, uh, to push production in a final step. Um, Do, did you ever have a, a, a chance uh, now just to ask a question about to uh, to think about those topics and uh, to have a kind of case that uh, that should include th that actually would include uh, analysis of the, uh, different topics that put in you that kind of uh, task? You didn't understand. No. <laughs> so I'm asking. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll translate. Okay, I did, even me, I didn't formalize very well. Uh, so I was asking now uh, about, we have this, uh, what we were talking about till now, uh, some basic principles. Did you ever have the opportunity to, to have a case in front of you and to, to be in, uh, in a position to analyze and to think deeper about those things, having in mind specific case that is in front of you? Uh, cred că în insolvență, cei care lucrează în insolvență, cred că cei care lucrează în insolvență se lovesc de astfel de probleme economice atunci când trebuie să aprobe un plan de reorganizare, uh, mai ales la marile companii care sunt în reorganizare judiciară, adică doresc să reintre din nou uh, în, uh, în activitate, activitatea normală. Atunci când aprobe un plan de reorganizare, trebuie să analizezi situațiile financiare la unei companii, să vezi dacă, din perspectivă economică, are șansă de reorganizare. Deci aplici niște uh, aplici, uh, cunoștințe strict economice, care, de regulă, într-adevăr, sunt furnizate de specialiști. Dar tu trebuie să le analizezi și să uh, se retești prin filtru propriu și să consideri că planul de reorganizare uh, a poate avea succes și să-l aprobi. Contrazic un pic pe colegul meu, potrivit legii insolvenției și legea veche 85 pe 2006 și legea actuală 85 pe 2014, judecătorul sindic nu are ca atribuție verificarea viabilității, oportunității sau șansei reale a unui plan de reorganizare. Deci noi ceea ce analizăm este dacă la aprobarea unui plan de reorganizare, dacă a fost votat de anumiți creditori, dacă respectă un tratament egal al creditorilor în șansa de a-și satisface creanțele, deci noi nu analizăm practic situația financiară economică a societății aflată în insolvență. Deci nu creditorii decid cu administratorul judiciar dacă, planul de dacă societatea economică financiară a societății permite reorganizarea, redresarea uh, financiară. Este Așa e în dreptul român. Este, în dreptul adevărat ce spune, este adevărat ce spune colega noastră. Eu mă referam doar la faptul că ai o apreciere generală, tocmai în aprecierea acelor criterii legale, sunt câteva criterii acolo în care ai tangențe cu așa ceva și um, nu în sensul de, de oportunitate, ca precizat spre oportunității acelui plan de reorganizare, ci în sensul că pentru a îndeplini, a vedea că acele criterii legale sunt îndeplinite, te lovești de probleme economice ale unei societăți comerciale. Și cred că are legătură cu economia în sensul acesta am vrut să spun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now uh, another question comes to my mind and I would like also to, to hear your opinion. What uh, when we talk about uh, enforcement of the judicial the judicial decision? Uh, how important and how relevant do you think that the, the knowledge about the, this kind of uh, information uh, would help you to, to make the, the um, decision Uh, in terms of to uh, to make enforcement enforcement easier or uh, more difficult La or if you have some specific case if uh, when you have experience that would be even better so to uh, to understand la noi executarea intervine la momentul la care creditorul are o hotărâre că vorbim despre activitatea noastră de judecată are o hotărâre definitivă prin care debitorul pârâtul este obligat să plătească anumite sume de bani. Iar procedura de executare 
se întoarce, începe la executorul judecătoresc, o anumită procedură de cuvințare a executării silite care nu mai ține de noi în comercial. Singurul lucru pe care noi îl facem ca judecător este să recunoaștem și să încuvințăm executarea pe teritoriul României a hotărârilor judecătorești pronunțate în statele membre, nemembre ale Uniunii, membre ale Uniunii Europene. Deci partea de executare nu mai mă interesează pe mine. În cazul în care în cursul procesului, însă, părâta mea intră în, se deschide procedura insolvenței, legea română ne obligă să suspendăm de drept cauza până la soluționarea, mă rog, și se, și se direcționează către secția palimente unde se dezbate cazul. Deci, la noi nu avem, cel puțin noi în comercial, secția 6 nu are legătură cu astfel de chestiuni. La noi, în România, procedura execuțională ține de instanța civilă. Practic, eu, ca și judecător în comercial, nu fac aplicarea niciunei, niciunei dispoziții referitoare la litigile cu profesioniști. Executarea este partea finală după ce eu am pronunțat hotărârea rămasă definitivă la mine sau la Curtea de Apel. Ok. Thank you. Ok. Uh... Uh, the um, logical step after the, we explain uh, market economy, uh, macroeconomy and microeconomy uh, is the uh, market equilibrium uh, as a result of the rules set in, uh, in those two. And uh, market equilibrium actually is uh, the, the point where we uh, have together supply and demand. So, uh, based on the, the, the level of the different supply and demand for specific goods or services, uh, we, uh, we are having uh, market values. So, uh, one is the production value, that uh, the cost of production or cost of the real cost of the services plus profi profit. But uh, completely other things is uh, the relation between uh, demand and supply. So, uh, I think that we all know that if supply is higher than demand, then the, the prices, they need to go absolutely down because uh, uh, if we want to, to, to make th things move forward and to our production uh, cycles uh, to be active, we cannot uh, wait and keep the, the prices as high as it is just because our idea is to, uh, to, have, to earn that uh, additional extra money. On the other side, if demand is uh, higher than supply, that automatically uh, push the prices up because uh, the necessity of the goods is higher than the, the, what is offered uh, in the market itself. So uh, that is really uh, something th to think about when you talk about, uh, for example, a market of the luxury goods or lux uh, in one side, or on the other side, market of the, uh, the basic and elementary uh, goods that they are needed for everyday uh, life. Uh, there is also non-market values that there are goods and services uh, um, that they are uh, sold, bought and sold in the market, but still uh, they're, they're not sold and bought in the market, but still have economic value, uh, like have uh, general uh, utility, public goods, like the, the, the goods in, a, uh, in a, um, ownership of the state, etc. But they still can produce some uh, additional value uh, from the market. Um, this, uh, with this, I, I would finalize this kind of basic uh, economic uh, part, which uh, I was trying to 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 be, uh, how to say, more uh, innovative and try to to somehow to connect more to your uh, what you are doing, but it's very difficult because. Uh, uh, these things they can be explained more and in very much detailed and then after a, a few days of explanation maybe we could arrive to the specific uh, um, points that can connect your daily work with uh, something that uh, is here but uh, like this we have just a short overview. The next uh, uh, topic is uh, going to be uh, entrepreneurship and the role of entrepreneurship in economic development. So, uh, in your opinion, uh, what is the entrepreneurship and what is the entrepreneur? I just want to understand the, the perception of, uh, like, you like individuals, not like judges, like, uh, what is the, the perception of entrepreneur in uh, Romania?
you might have, we must have some opinion. Care inițiază un business, deci asta o definiție ca și simplu cetățean, nu prin prisma profesiei. Deci un business din care să obțină profit. Dacă se poate în România, un profit de pe azi pe mâine ar fi ideal. Suntem mai grăbiți noi. Probabil că ținem de la timiditate. Cred că români. Vreau să spun. Cred că definiția e un nebun care riscă crezând că poate să câștige bani. Asta cred că vrea să spun mai grabă la, referitor la piața din România. Deci cred că definiția este foarte bine spusă de la început. Cred că altcineva își poate închipui că un antreprenor este o persoană care pune împreună uh, uh, resursele umane, împreună cu uh, bunuri și la final scoate un produs finit, uh, asumându-și riscul la acele afaceri. Cred că asta e definiția clară prin toate manualele. Nu avem o altă vedere diferită. <laughs> N-aș putea să mă rup de ceea ce am învățat <laughs> deja la școală. Ah. Ah, ok. Some other thoughts around? No. Ok. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, yes. The, our perception about uh, entrepreneurs is usually starts like the colleague uh, told that, uh, that those are people who are trying to to find the gap, price gaps, and uh, to improve their uh, economic situation and to earn some profit. Uh, I would say I would add actually to the idea about the Latin and Romanian uh, part of the. I think that uh, uh, entrepreneurship exists in every society, in every country. Uh, what is the difference uh, between entrepreneurship uh, in Eastern Europe and uh, is the, the, the crisis that uh, eventually arrived after the fall of communism period? And uh, basically the, 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 the people were looking for a way to, to improve their uh, very low income in a way to, that it was possible in, the, in a specific moment. Uh, since the communism period, it was completely non-market economy, and this was uh, after arrived a kind of opportunity to 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 make some trade and some business. Uh, the log the legal framework, the rules, they were more flexible, and then it gives opportunity to other people to be very innovative in many different ways. Some of those ways are kind of positive, and some of those are really uh, not so uh, as a positive, uh, uh, without, without positive outcome, and of course, without positive uh, repercussions for the, uh, our um, uh, perception of entrepreneurship and entrepreneurs in general. So, for example, now uh, we have situation that uh, usually when we say entrepreneur, that, that it have kind of negative, uh, more negative aspect than uh, something uh, which is very positive. Uh, just because we have uh, cases like uh, from real life, I don't know, like uh, end of 90s, the situation with the, um, uh, between, for example, Serbia and Romania, uh, selling the gasoline from Romania to Serbia. Those are the famous entrepreneurs that later became uh, more and more powerful. And basically, most of the time, we have that idea, okay, they started in a way like I bought, I buy here for one euro, selling in uh, Serbia for three, earning a lot of money, easy money. And uh, which, in a way, it's true, but on the other way, if we have uh, that kind of uh, legal framework that allow that kind of activities, and we have many different uh, levels of control, that, for example, custom control, uh, financial police, and everything other, and that, uh, even with that, it's possible. Then uh, it's also some something to to say, okay, that that person find a way to do his business in a more or less uh, framework, given framework, and. Uh, of course, not, talk, not, not talking about uh, more um, specific cases where uh, it, it's come with this kind of criminal actions, etc. So, uh, basically, the, the, um, the situation creates the opportunity. Whenever we are in a situation to, to be innovative, we will try the way to, 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 to use the opportunity and to be innovative uh, uh, with the final result to, to uh, 
uh, earn some money. Uh, so that the first part of this slide is actually arbitration, what we were talking about, the price, looking for price gaps, etc. But also, uh, and uh, for me, really important part is innovation. And uh, basically, uh, entrepreneurship could be innovative, uh, discovering new trading opportunities, or, for example, discovering low costs or new, technolo new technologies. Uh, I had opportunity to, while I was on my way here to, um, to Romania, uh, I was reading in the airplane uh, one magazine and uh, there was an interesting story about a uh, producer uh, from Iceland and uh, they are producing uh, fish leather. So basically, I never heard in my life, I don't know about you, uh, basically leather that is used for shoes, bags, etc. from fish. So it was really interesting the title, so I said, okay, let's, let's read a little bit. And uh, basically, what's the situation? The market in, uh, in the country was really very well specialized because uh, they have a lot of um, cattle and uh, there was a lot of uh, available uh, cattle skin. And so uh, company exists for 50 years and they were producing a lot and exporting a lot for very significant uh, buyers like fashion industry and so on, really, really high position. And during the period of time, market changed because the Russian producers, they, they, were, uh, they arrived to have a dominant position on the international market with the lower prices, good, uh, good quality, etc. And the company find themselves in a, uh, in a vacuum because they, uh, they start losing their uh, income, the, the, the level of the sales fall down, and etc. Et so at the end, they arrived also to the point not, not, to, be, not to close. And the daughter of the owner, she was, since they are surrounded with a lot of fish, and there is a f uh, very uh, well-developed fish industry in terms of uh, food industry, and they wanted to be kind of uh, also env environment, uh, to concern env env environment, uh, kind of to be cautious environmentally and to, to use the, the, the skin both from cattles or for fish that is already killed for other purposes, not for that. So they start the uh, innovation process and uh, they, uh, after many attempts, they succeed to, to produce that uh, leather, let's say uh, uh, fish leather, that is uh, actually seven times more stronger than a uh, regular one. And uh, they now have a variety of 4,000 different kind of uh, colors. And they again, uh, even not, they, they are not the same level, but they, they even improve level of their uh, position because they have again the, the same buyers like Gucci, Louis Vuitton, and uh, those kind of so really important buyers. So that is the, the, the one uh, positive example how entrepreneurship in ourselves, entrepreneur in ourselves can, uh, can add additional value, not just to your family, because we are talking about family firm here, so maybe 20 employees like very, very small, but very important on the world scale, worldwide scale, but also to, to improve the, the wider uh, community. And uh, the success of that company actually influenced a lot about also uh, from a fisherman to the, to the uh, factory producing. So everybody are in, involved, in, involved in that chain of, of production. So uh, basically, uh, we should uh, consider uh, entrepreneurs as a, as a um, how to say, energizers or a kind of moving force of each uh, society to move things from bottom uh, up uh, in a positive way. And even that, uh, that they need to have some kind of uh, environment how to be developed is not easy and not uh, it's very naive to expect that uh, it can be developed uh, completely uh, out of the bloom just because somebody is more innovative and somebody have some ideas but also environment need to be supportive and also uh, legal framework would uh, would need to be uh, set in a way that that makes things uh, possible so uh, the when we talk about that, we, we should talk about quality of institution, uh, institutions. So we need to have specifically set it rule of the games in, in one market, legitimacy of the rules, uh, different kind of laws, social capital issues. And also, we were talking a little bit be, uh, before about enforcement. It's also really important to, to have enforcement of the rules. So in every different aspect, from, uh, from uh, uh, practical enforcement, but also to enforcement of ju judicial decisions. If we have a system uh, that works uh, properly and uh, fast, 
then we can also uh, expect that uh, he have some kind of uh, progress in that way. Uh, I can also make uh, another uh, uh, comparison, for example, with Italy. Uh, Italian situation is that, uh, as Giulio yesterday told about, that Italy is uh, very famous for design and there is a big companies. On the other hand, Italy is not very good uh, environment for uh, small businesses and entrepreneurs. So uh, it's very difficult uh, just because of this uh, kind of technical issues. There is not a, a lot of support and uh, help to small entrepreneurs, small designers, small uh, ideas to come into reality. Because first of all, there is not available funding in the, um, in the funds that, that should be devoted to help the innovative ideas. Second, the bureaucracy is very uh, much present. Uh, enforcement, uh, like uh, the, the cases in, the, uh, in front of the uh, Italian courts, uh, average duration is about around seven years. Uh, and then uh, enforcement of judicial decision is even longer. So it, everything uh, it so uh, makes the uh, situation very difficult for small individual uh, innovators, producers, etc., to be uh, supported. European Union, they uh, have that uh, also. I mean, not they. I mean, all, all all of EU countries. They need to follow strict. Uh, EU rules. So, for example, in the agricultural sector, where there is a kind of significant uh, number of the small producers with very specific products, now they are also in problem because they don't know how to adapt their own techn technology with strict EU re regulations. So, even that is not helpful. So, basically, uh, the state should be the one to, ma to make a buffer, to make a kind of uh, situation uh, to follow the, the rules. Uh, higher rules like EU uh, joint market, but also to give the opportunity to, for people not to, to feel uh, safe and protected and to, to start thinking in a more broader way, instead to reduce uh, uh, technology uh, production, instead to reduce the, the variety of the products. Italy, as you might know, is uh, one of the uh, best countries when we talk about food and there is a lot of different uh, uh, Types, for example, cheese. Uh, every, every, almost every uh, little village they have special cheese. They are making in a special way, which is not always related to the EU reg regulations. So what they are doing instead to to continue producing, they cannot. They don't have market to to sell that. So it goes on the on the black market, selling very locally, or is, they are going to stop producing and they start producing very something very uh, that is according to the. EU standard or national standard. So it's not uh, something that uh, one national economy should uh, uh, aim for, actually. It's a, something that... Uh, so now, from this few um, examples, you can see how, how important is uh, entrepreneurship for one, for one society. I will also give another example uh, when we talk about um, gender uh, sensibility and uh, related with enter uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, I have opportunity. I had opportunity to to work in uh, uh, Palestine, and uh, the 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 role of the women and the generally economic uh, strength of the women. It's really women are really marginalized group. And uh, so there, there was kind of attempt how to how to improve uh, their own um, position in a way uh, to to give them to empower them to be more independent uh, and not so depend dependable from the f other family units. So, so basically, they create associations of the uh, women. I mean, they are they they are kind of make some handcraft products, many different uh, ones from the, I don't know, tablecloths and jumpers or whatever. And uh, so they make an uh, association, and the association actually is uh, pushing uh, things forward. So uh, to have like 100, 150 individual members of the association adding their own value, they have already uh, significant uh, power. And they have already significant offer to be uh, to to offer on the market and to exchange and to improve their economic situation. The same thing we have, for example, in Kyrgyzstan with the the, 
the products of the sheep wool in the same situation with the women in the rural areas. They are, uh, they are joined in a kind of associations. So that is something uh, also that uh, how something that uh, we are able to do even without big education just because uh, family tradition can empower us enough to, uh, to, to make uh, kind of uh, positive steps forward in uh, improving our economic uh, uh, stability and also giving us a chance for newer generations to, to, uh, to, to, make, uh, to, to build their children, etc., in a proper way to educate them, etc. Uh, public uh, policies adopted in the society, they are security of private property rights, that uh, it was the topic yesterday, what, what we need to have present, uh, freedom on contract, uh, monetary restraint, fiscal responsibility, and free trade. Those are kind of uh, conditions for, uh, for quality um, implementation of the entrepreneurial uh, actions in, a, in a one market. So without that, we cannot talk uh, ab uh, about the quality entrepreneurial uh, market in the country. Uh, you see uh, private property rights, that's why we, uh, we devoted uh, one uh, whole day uh, uh, on that specific topic because uh, it's really uh, crucial. And also, during our inception mission to Bucharest at the beginning of this year, we had opportunity to meet uh, with many different institutions, uh, legal professionals, and to try to understand uh, what is going on on the market. And uh, back there, uh, back then, we had uh, several different meetings with the lawyers. And uh, we actually we understand that uh, in Romania there is a lot of uh, things going on on intellectual property. And there is a lot of uh, international companies, but local companies, there is many, many, many different cases, many different interesting cases, at least for us it was really something uh, exciting and what I can tell even for you that, uh, that is interesting. So basically there is a lot of cases in Romania that they are um, going on and what is good uh, from what I can tell, talking with the experts, but also with Giulio, who is outside of Romania, but very uh, well know the, the context of Romania, that the, the laws and the policies are in place and uh, things are going uh, pretty well comparing to other countries even. Uh, institutions and uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, so, uh, effectiveness of different regimes is a function of relative uh, price of enforcement. So. I was talking before about, so not to go again, uh, relative prices are guide behavioral adoptions. So basically to have a free market, open market, and uh, to have the prices that they are uh, absolutely um, under control of supply and demand, that is something that uh, is uh, very beneficial. Um, and then uh, also the entrepreneurial activity uh, responds to relative it's very sensible to prices. So if you have uh, a kind of positive pricing environment, then uh, entrepreneurs can be more productive. On the other side, can be unproductive. And uh, in some cases, could be evasive. So that's the cases that I mentioned at the beginning of the, the topic about the, the, the black economy and f trying to find the, the, the holes in the, the legal framework. So how to, to skip the, the law, how to skip the pay, avoid paying taxes, etc. I think that uh, those kind of entrepreneurs are the ones that you are meeting the most in your <laughs> life because they are the, the easiest uh, one to arrive, uh, to, more chance to arrive in front of, uh, in your courtroom, if you have them so. Uh, so, uh, there is several con uh, main conclusions when we talk about uh, entrepreneurship. And uh, the first one is that entrepreneurship is omnipresent. So in uh, every different regime, in every country, all around the world, we have uh, entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship. It's just uh, about a uh, state and the framework, how that is going to be visible and how uh, entrepreneurship is going to, the percentage of the uh, role of entrepreneurship in the total economy. Uh, government cannot create entrepreneurship. Uh, most of the times we are uh, 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 witnesses of the government talks about uh, specific measures they are going to uh, introduce to help uh, um, create more uh, entrepreneurial activity. Uh, 
Uh, that is something that uh, not rely with the reality because uh, entrepreneurs, as, as I told before, uh, as omnipresent uh, uh, activity, we cannot produce more than we have. So if we have XYZ uh, creative individuals in Romania, those are the ones. What we can do is to, to, to promote them more and to help them to, uh, to grow uh, faster and to be more visible in a way to, uh, to add the value to the national economy. Not something that, uh, for example, maybe in this room we have 10 of us entrepreneurs, maybe we are not even one. So, whoever is going to put some effort here on us, if we are zero entrepreneurs, we, are, we, are, we cannot uh, achieve, uh, we cannot uh, change ourselves and become one, because it's also kind of natural talent and uh, also love to do something, it's not something that... Uh, then transparency, accountability are critical for reform. So uh, all the, the legal framework and the, the, the general rules uh, need to be transparent and uh, without that, and, uh, real entrepreneurship is not going to happen in uh, any country. Uh, reform needs to be decentralized, also decentralization is a, a, as a one of the important uh, elements of the every market economy need to be present, otherwise uh, it's going to slow the processes, it's going to, uh, to reduce uh, the effort and wish for entrepreneurs to be uh, more present. And identifying and maintaining indig uh, indigenous institutions is a key. Uh, these indigenous institutions, they are present in uh, each country. As I told, like for example, in Kyrgyzstan, uh, ladies, they produce handcrafts, basically it's not something new. They are doing that for centuries. And that is just something that is uh, uh, identified and uh, maintained in a way, try to be maintained in a way to uh, add some value to the economy, but also to the individual lives of the, the people in the process. And of course, in each country exists uh, this kind of, or like I mentioned, the Italians, uh, Italian agricultural producers. For sure, there is a similar one in, in Romania as well, in the rural area, etc. Or some specific uh, craftsmanship uh, that is uh, like present for centuries now. We are uh, all uh, witnesses that uh, this kind of job uh, and uh, activities they are dying just because of uh, industrial higher industrialization and the globalization of the market. So basically, there is no economic uh, sense to produce one thing. Uh, uh, here in Romania when the same thing is going to come from China ten times cheaper. So, but there is other ways also in tendencies how to, to, the, uh, to add specific value to the same thing and to, to be more uh, valuable and in, in that case also sellable to the market no matter that there is substitutes from other markets, uh, cheaper markets and industrial products. Uh, Mr. Uh, Radu, who is going to talk uh, after me, uh, he will uh, talk more about the uh, Romanian context uh, of the economy, general economic terms. Uh, I have prepared in my uh, presentation some forms of business organization uh, in Romania. Uh, I'm sure that you are familiar with those, uh, so I will just... Uh, Read uh, so basically uh, according to the dead company law from 1990, and uh, um, which is which was amended, there is five different type of companies, and uh, I think that in your daily work, you most of, uh, most of the times you have uh, you are dealing with those, no? So uh, limited liability company on SRL, SRL, joint stock company SA, general partnership SNC. Limited partnership, SCS, and limited partnership by shares, SCA. Uh, you're familiar with those, uh, yeah? Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, I, I, because first time I was talking more about that, but uh, there is no need actually. It's a kind of basic. If you do, do, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, those are five. Yeah. Do you have some, some more or? Uh, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, the, this one SRL, for example, is the same like uh, in Italy. Uh, there are some other type of individual people. They have another law mm -hmm. for individual, uh, but they are not a company. Uh -huh. They are uh, persons who have a business. 
Uh -huh. We have another logo, this type. So that could be kind of entrepreneurs, entrepreneur forum, yes. like that they are, like you will or the, I don't know, the produce. The name of the person, mm -hmm. an individual business with a name, mm -hmm. without to be another uh, legal person, mm -hmm. the same person. Yes. You know? And have a special law for this, and mm -hmm. special taxation, mm -hmm. special registration mm -hmm. for the companies, so, but it's not a company. Yes, 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 the kind so of individual. They have separated the companies so, and, and the individuals mm -hmm. who make this kind of business. And uh, when we talk about those, can you give me example? They are, uh, they are present most in the agriculture, like agricultural producers or? Yes, yes, small businesses in, in a rural uh, mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. They work there. Yeah, and they also can have a kind of a little selling outlet, like a small shop in the city, or it's not the case? Uh -huh. the most common type of business. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So now we are coming to competition uh, part and I'm happy that uh, most of you have uh, experience uh, with the competition cases. So before I start talking about uh, this part I would like to hear uh, the most common um, cases that you are dealing with uh, in the competition field uh, in Romania. Can you share something? Cel mai usual, mă rog, cel mai obișnuit litigiu în materie de concurență, cel puțin la nivelul uh, secția 6 -a. În 9 ani de cajude de comercial, doar două dosare am avut în acest sens. Uh, se referă la faptul că un uh, fost angajat al societății uh, se supără pe societate pleacă, își deschide o societate cu același obiect de activitate și pleacă cu tot cu clientel. Și cam la asta se reduce, sau cel puțin v-am zis, la nivelul secția 6, dosarele pe care eu le-am avut, la asta s-au limitat. Și o eventual fără și know-how. Dă, dă în judecată cea de-a doua societate și pe asociat și cere despăgubiri pe motiv că i-a furat clientela și face acte de concurență neloială. Cam la asta s-a redus. litigation between the National Post Office who gave a, a benefit, a special price for one company but not for all the companies mm -hmm. which they make the same deal with Post Office and it was a penalty from the Competition Council and after this company asked a payment for this difference between the benefit of price, of the difference for the other partners, mm -hmm. the prior price so uh, they win the case mm -hmm. because we had the competition uh, council uh, penalty so it mm -hmm. was very clear mm -hmm. that it was uh, not legal what mm -hmm. make the national post office so that was a, a violation of competition law mm -hmm. yes yes and uh, since the, there is a um, that competition uh, law uh, actually romania is using competition law uh, domestic but also eu legislation and uh, there is also secondary legislation uh, done by competition council in uh, Romania, which uh, competition out the competition council actually is the major competition authority in the country, uh, which I was wanted to talk. But okay, we can discuss also. So, uh, what is the uh, the um, uh, workflow? Basically, you are receiving the the case uh, from the competition council as uh, something that they identify on the market, and then they are. Uh, not always. <coughs> in my case, it was priori priority the competition council who give this penalty, mm -hmm. and it was much more simple for us only mm -hmm. to calculate uh, the difference of price. Mm -hmm. But it is possible to come directly to a commercial uh, court mm -hmm. to ask and uh, to establish the situation what happened and to make this. It's much more difficult for us yes. because it is a uh, very sensitive uh, mm -hmm. to. We need a lot of uh, proofs um, if we have this problem of competition. So it's, mm -hmm. it is much more simple if it's coming from the competition council. Mm -hmm. it is, yeah. uh, I think the most uh, difficult cases in uh, this court of uh, public uh, administrative right we have yeah. here. Mm -hmm. 
it's a very complex litigation. Yeah. Some other experiences? If I tell that the main issues related to the competition law are the actually merger control of uh, economic or economic concentrations, uh, or cartels and collusion, anti-competitive agreements between undertakings, decisions uh, by associations, and uh, abuse of dominant position in the market, or state aid. Maybe something uh, among that is uh, among those lines are uh, are something related to your experience uh, as well. În domeniul contenciosului administrativ se întâlnesc acest gen de litigi. În comercial, nu. Deci cei, de la, cei colegii de la contencios administrativ judecă astfel de litigi în mod curent. Pentru că există o procedură, de, există o procedură prealabilă care se trece prin, contenciosul administra, prin Consiliul Concurenței și unde ea acolo analizează situația asta, iar împotriva acestor decizii ale Consiliului, ele se atacă la instanțele de contencios administrativ. Și noi, acum de curând, în domeniul comercial, toate, toate litigiile legate de, de despăgubiri de pe contracte de concesiune de achiziții publice, ajung uh, acum în competența noastră, dar după uh, faza încheierii contractului de achiziție publică, ele sunt, au trecut în competența instanțelor de comercial. De curând. Mm -hmm. Ok. Some other experiences with the... Okay, this was uh, uh, almost all that uh, it was uh, planned to, uh, to be shared during this uh, training module. And uh, as you can see, very theoretical, and uh, now you will have uh, two additional modules to talk uh, maybe in more details, and uh, I'm sure that Mr. Radu, as a local expert, he have, will have more uh, approach that is going to be closer to what you are doing so that, uh, again, this uh, training can uh, add some ad additional value to your uh, future uh, activities in the court. Uh, from my point of view, I, from my, uh, from my uh, point, yeah, I, I wish to say thanks for your participation. And uh, I was really enjoying yesterday uh, watching, uh, seeing you very uh, active uh, during the, the, the presentation of Mrs. Zanetti. That was really something uh, that we wish hope for. And uh, hopefully the, the, by the end of the day is going to be uh, more or less the same. This mine was a kind of more static, so uh, I apologize for that. Uh, if you have uh, additional questions, uh, da, aș avea eu una. Sunt foarte curios cum privește un economist, teoretician și practician, cum sunteți dumneavoastră, în circuitul economic al unui stat și în special după o perioadă în care, cum a fost, de exemplu, în țările din Estul Europei, comunismul. Statul intervine în economie. Care vi se pare că este cel mai importantă intervenție a statului pentru dezvoltarea economiei. Aș putea da exemple, liberalizarea imediată a economiei, susținerea întreprinzătorilor mici sau bari, în general măsuri economice, sau și, mi se pare important, și educația. Adică, pentru prima măsură, care vi se pare că ar fi piatra de temelie atunci când statul vrea să dezvolte o economie de piață. Prima piatră care vi se pare cea mai importantă. Evident că ele sunt interdependente, este un circuit ca un cerc care sunt legate de una de alta. Dar care vi se pare că este prima piatră care uh, are relevanță când vrei să dezvolți o economie de piață? Prima piatră, educația sau măsurile strict economice? Well, uh... Thank you. One question, but not so easy one to, to answer. Uh, uh, well, in my opinion, I think it's a mix of, uh, of things. It's not possible. First of all, there is no uh, uh, one uh, 
success story or one, uh, let's say, uh, recipe how to implement, uh, how to, uh, to move one economy from the planned one to market one. So it depends on many different factors. Like, uh, first of all, depends on mentality, depends on development of the market, etc. Uh, I think that, uh, for example, uh, our expectations are most of the time very high. Because uh, even though we have, for example, legislation in, in place, like we can uh, uh, have, like in some, we are not talking about Romania, so for example, X, Y country, to apply complete uh, existing uh, legislation, like from uh, the best, uh, the, the most developed uh, market economies. So we have the, those in place. But what does it mean if uh, we, can, we don't have enough people to enforce that legislation in practice? Or enough knowledge on the, on the market side to, to understand the, the, the rights and duties and how to act in a, in a certain market? So I think that, uh, like legislation, also education, uh, it's really crucial. Education is a crucial, but uh, it's a very long process. And uh, it's not something that uh, could come uh, easily. So, for example, having in mind Eastern European countries that, uh, and uh, the period after 90s, we, we have more or less similar situation in all of them. The only difference is the difference of, uh, of mentality of the people and how people adopt themselves to the new uh, reality. So, for example, if we compare uh, Slovenia as an as a ex-communist country, the same country like Macedonia, or uh, any other countries, like, for example, those two I know better. So uh, it's uh, it was the same. It was Yugoslavia. It was all the they were living in the same uh, environment. But the the level of the knowledge of the people and the, uh, the the mentality makes a big, huge difference. That now we have Slovenia, one of the best uh, market economies in the European Union, and then other countries they are not they are uh, lagging behind. So, uh, to be successful in, the, in transition, I think that uh, uh, the, mo the crucial part is education. The cr that is the crucial part. And uh, the, also what is present in the moment, not just in Eastern Europe, but uh, generally, it's erosion uh, er uh, of uh, education. So basically we have a lot of private uh, schools, private uh, universities, etc., where the level of the knowledge of the final outputs of students that are finishing the, their school, it's lower and lower. That is not, that's not going to be helpful, not just for Eastern Europe, uh, European countries, but also for uh, uh, Western Europe. I, I'm talking now, I'm having in mind Italian uh, market with uh, how, how education system works. So that is something to, uh, in my opinion, the most important, not just for market economy, but generally speaking. Cu alte cuvinte, trebuie întâi să creezi individu care creează instituția, apoi instituția creează la rândul lui indivizi care se ducă pe mai departe economia. Yeah, uh, well, uh, I, I wouldn't say first, second, because we, we are already living in, a, in a, some market. So even though if it wasn't a, a free market, a market economy, we are we are living in a current moment, and we uh, we cannot say okay now we are stop thinking about uh, institutions, uh, legislations. We are thinking about education. We we need to do all that in parallel, because otherwise we don't have time. I mean now to to uh, to produce a number of qualified, uh, educated personalities to be able to fill the institutions, but also to to act as a market players. Maybe we need thir next 30 years. And what we are doing mean meanwhile, we need to, to, to do the best to, to improve whatever we have. And uh, then the education is on the long run, is going to help improving little by little all the, all the rest. But we need to work on all, all the rest. We cannot be just focused on education. Okay. For example, uh, we are losing a lot of time since uh, most of the Eastern European countries, they are uh, on market economy already uh, since 1990s. So it's already almost 30 years. So we, are, we already lost so, so much time and we are arrived in the kind of situation when everything is going but it's not so well and uh, who knows, it's, from this situation it's very difficult to to be to have a clear picture, but even now the education would be like if it was started back then with the education, now we would have some completely different situation.
but to be entrepreneur you need the economical school because in Romania most of them they don't have any connection with economical school. Yeah, uh, well, they that, have only natural instinct of business, yeah. nothing else. And that is that is the role of the of the of the framework national framework for entrepreneurs. Because you don't need to be economist to be entrepreneur. You cannot you cannot be too I, I I'm economist, I cannot be a judge just because I have uh, talent to be a judge. I need... You will be a failure of the business if you don't have basic no. economical knowledge. You will, you will have bankrupt in one year if you don't organize well your business. Well, but you... Uh, Even if with a good idea of business. Uh, like institu uh, institutional consultancy support for uh, individual uh, entrepreneurs, that is something that uh, services they can support uh, growing that uh, personalities as well. Like uh, small association or specific... What? For this, you need capital. For, yeah, also financial institutions who are ready to support uh, innovative uh, people. You see? So this is the role of the government to support these people with yeah. good ideas, yes, with this yes, infrastructure yeah. of council. Yeah. If you have, uh, for example, a few financial organizations on the market who are ready to give a small loans like up to 10, 20,000 euro with, uh, for startups, then you have uh, financial advisors. Uh, it sounds very, pretty important, but like small uh, advisory agencies, they can give, uh, provide uh, help and the trainings how to, uh, for uh, entrepreneurs how to how to develop themselves. Then yes, it's possible. Uh, I have uh, experience. I used to work in uh, one uh, bank that was owned by uh, USAID, and actually our role uh, was ex exactly what you're talking now. So basically, we were advising uh, banks, so we were giving startup loans for many different. Uh, Entrepreneurs, basically, like uh, agricultural producers, but many other different, like uh, uh, craftsmanship, women um, production, etc. And we were giving also advices to the to the small businesses how to to manage their uh, financial, um, how to say, uh, how to follow the, the the market rules in the terms uh, how to apply, uh, how to comply with the existing legislation, and how to think positive in a, in a way to achieve uh, better results. So that was our role, for example. So if you have institutions like that, and uh, like kind of uh, tax benefits uh, from the state, and uh, you already have a good enough environment to, to grow the entrepreneur, entrepreneurs in, a, in mass society. Those are the, for example, good example for small steps. We usually we think big and how what we can do bigger and but we can do very uh, we can be so much productive with a sm few small things to add on the market. I'm I'm not sure, for example, if it is some kind of financial institutions of that kind exist in Romania. <coughs> yeah, but for example, usually commercial banks they are really strict and I I, I used to work after that USAID bank in a real uh, commercial bank, so I know that. I was so sorry, and they always uh, trying to to persuade our management to try to consider those kind of people because even though they don't have a business back, uh, uh, history and you cannot uh, make uh, proper credit analysis, still they are very good in repayment of the of the loans because uh, when you have good idea and you have the knowledge how to do something, then it's easy uh, with few advices to to proceed. And we had a lot of successful stories. I mean that was back now already 14 years ago when I uh, was uh, there and still I'm meeting some of the clients that grow themselves in a really, like now they are really successful companies starting from like uh, nothing really. <coughs> that is possible with few euros, a few thousand euros of the, of the loan. In this global economy, it's still working this small business? Yeah, yeah, it works because in the local market, for example, if you have a good idea, like for example that fish ladder, or that is a kind of really top notch, let's say, but if we are talking more about like agricultural producers, I think that now the, 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 our, uh, the all that uh, new about he health tendencies and uh, what we are eating, the quality of food, I think that individual producers of the good quality meat or dairy products, etc., is, is going to be more and more valuable on the market. Exactly, this is the problem in Romania. These small producers cannot distribute their products and they lose everything because the big supermarkets don't buy this kind of product yeah. and this is a huge problem. Yeah. But and then, they collapse one by one. Yeah, yeah, th that's the problem in, ge in generally. But for example, in Italy, uh, okay, I will talk just 
about that and then we need to, to finish. For example, there is uh, there are small producers that are organizing uh, that kind of uh, uh, agri-markets. So for example, the best, I, I live in Rome, so that is Lazio. So for example, every weekend there is a big market where all individual producers from all around the Lazio, they are coming with their own products. So there is not a, a person like uh, we are accustomed, so I, I am the seller, so I'm going and buy different products and I'm selling your products. No, everybody sells their own. And uh, they, so they know, they know how to explain what is the product about, which milk is used, if it's about cheese, uh, how the, 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 the... So people appreciate that. You don't need to go to Carrefour to, to buy cheese if you have opportunity. I mean, you have different opportunities. Or you're going to buy cheese for one euro in Oferta, or you're going to buy one that costs 10 euro, but there is something... Uh, value that is added, that is local cheese or whatever. So that is, for example, one of the, of, of the options. The other one is the small grocery shops that exist. I, I also telling about Italy, what, what exists now, and uh, very specialized. And they are more and more uh, active. There is also a new tendency to have restaurants with a kind of uh, self-production uh, product. have support from the Italian government, something, taxation, I well, don't know, European funds, something. Well, the, the or, problem is... That they, they or don't, it's a market problem. Oh. They don't have a, that, that. That is the reason they, they don't have support, any support, no, <laughs> no support. So, they, but you see, when you know to do one thing, you need to find a way how to to survive and to to improve yourself. You can complain and pushing always to the big chain to sell, or you can find many other different ways to 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 find the the market for your goods. So that is the entrepreneurial thinking, I think. And if you have support of state, then even better. But if you don't, there is always uh, ways how to how to approach the market, because it's all about appro approaching uh, the market and uh, finding the, the the building the interest of the buyers for your products. Okay, thank you.